If you spent any time at all using Vim, then there's a good chance that you might have also heard of this project called NeoVim. And if you're like me for a long time, I was confused. What exactly is the difference between Vim and NeoVim? Is NeoVim better than Vim? Do I need to switch from Vim? And in this video, I just want to answer those questions for you because I was confused for a long time. So I'm going to go over the main differences between Vim and NeoVim. And finally, my recommendations as to which one you should be using. Because the differences between Vim and NeoVim aren't that apparent just out of the box. But first, before I get into this, I need to give you a brief history lesson of what exactly NeoVim is. So NeoVim is a fork of the original Vim, as you can probably imagine. Now, Vim is authored and maintained by one person called Bram Moulinar, and his position in the Vim project is that of dictator for life. So whatever he says goes, and whatever he doesn't say doesn't go. So we can just even look at the commits here, and we can see that all the commits inside Vim are committed by Bram Moulinar himself. And so he has total control about what is being added and what is not being added into Vim. And so if somebody else has an idea of the direction that they want to take Vim into and it doesn't align with his, then it's just not going to happen. And so NeoVim first came about because some people were frustrated with his leadership. They wanted to add some features and they submitted a pull request and he just completely ignored them. And so NeoVim was created as a fork of Vim and it's more community driven, I guess you could say, than Vim. So if we go into commits here, then you can see that there's commits from all different kinds of people. It's not just one person. And in the early years of NeoVim, they were able to add a lot of features that just weren't present in the original Vim. Features like support for asynchronous actions and an embedded terminal inside Vim. But eventually Vim ended up adding those features as well. So about two or three years ago, if you were to ask about the big differences between Vim and NeoVim, I wouldn't really have been able to tell you much, but over the past couple of years, there have been a couple of significant changes to NeoVim that, in my opinion, really places it ahead of Vim. And right now, I think the biggest difference between Vim and NeoVim is Lua support. So as you may or may not know, Vim uses this language called VimScript, which was specifically made for Vim in order to handle its plugins and configuration. And so if you've ever written a Vim RC, then you probably know at least a little bit of Vim language. And the problem with that is that Vim script was never that capable of a language. It was cumbersome to work with. It was missing some features. And if you wanted to do some serious plugin development, then you would use an external language like Python. And so you would have to bring in all these external dependencies. And another problem is just that Vim script is slow. And so what NeoVim did is they brought in a proper language called Lua which is a lot more powerful than VimScript, and it's also baked into the editor, so you don't have to bring in some external dependencies like Python. And you might be wondering, if I don't write any plugins, why would I care about this? And that's because even if you don't care about Lua, even if you don't know any Lua at all, the thing is, if plugin developers like writing in Lua, then it's going to be much easier to bring about a whole bunch of great new extensions using Lua. And that's basically what has happened. So there's this list here of a whole bunch of great NeoVim plugins. And the thing is, since these are written in Lua, they just won't work with vanilla Vim. And some of these plugins are, in my opinion, really game changing. One NeoVim only plugin that is really great is NVim Tree Sitter. Well, it can do a few different things, but probably the most important thing will just be better syntax highlighting. And so just at a basic level, what you'll get is much richer syntax highlighting, as you can see here. And it has the ability to understand your code better and as such be able to highlight it better. Another very popular plugin is telescope.nvim. And what this is, is it's basically a fuzzy finder. And with it, you can search through your files, your documents, even the help docs if you want to. And I find this plugin very useful as well. Those are a couple of very popular plugins. But as I said, you can look through this list for a whole bunch of other plugins. A lot of them are very similar to some classic Vim plugins but they just have a lot more features and a lot more customizability. And of course, if you want to, you can continue using all of your favorite Vim script extensions. Those will all still work properly. So if you like the idea of having a lot more plugins to choose from, that is something you may like about NeoVim. Another nice feature of NeoVim is it has built-in LSP support. And you might be wondering what that is. LSP stands for Language Server Protocol. And I think the best way to explain this would just be to show you so with LSP, if you're working in a specific language, let's say CSS, 
and you want to get completions for that language or maybe documentation. So you can write something like, let's create a element here in CSS. And something that you might like to type is background color. And as you can see, as I am typing something out, I get a huge list right here of every possible thing that I could type in here. So let's say in my case, I wanted to select background color. And then it's even giving me a giant list right here of everything that I can possibly select. Let's say I want corn flower blue. That is right here. So it gives you all kinds of different useful completions and snippets. I can also type something like, let's say flex. And in case you forget the syntax for it, it will be right here on the side. And you can see what exactly it does. It will tell you in which browsers it's supported in. And you will get information and completion like this in any language that you want. But NeoVim just offers an interface for communicating with this server where it's pulling all of this information from. So if you actually want to download the servers, you have to do that yourself. So it does require a little bit of configuration. For example, I'm using this plugin called Mason, which has a giant list of every possible language server that you could download. So you can download one for TypeScript, JavaScript, anything else that you could possibly imagine. It is all here. And there are plugins that do something similar to this in vanilla Vim, like for example, coc.vim. But since LSP is a native part of NeoVim, it's going to be much faster and more efficient than a plugin like that. And so if you want an editor that can replace something like VS Code, then NeoVim is going to be a much better tool for that than Vim. And so those are the biggest differences that NeoVim has over Vim right now. But let's be fair, there are a few reasons why you might not want to use NeoVim and why you might want to use the standard Vim over NeoVim. And that's because if you're SSHing into different machines, maybe you have to log into a lot of web servers and make changes inside there. Well, they're obviously not going to be coming with NeoVim, whereas Vim is basically everywhere. So if you spend a lot of time working in web servers, but don't want to have to switch between your NeoVim configuration and the Vim on the server, then you might be better off just getting really familiar with vanilla Vim. Or maybe you don't really care about all of these plugins and LSP integration. Maybe you basically just use Vim as a text editor. Maybe you use no plugins or very few plugins. In that case, there really isn't as much of a reason to switch over. Some people want to turn their NeoVim into some crazy IDE-like experience. But if that's not you, if you're happy with just a text editor and that's about it, then Vim is fine. You're not really going to be missing much. But if what you like about Vim is the ability to extend it with plugins, then I think that you will really like NeoVim and I would give it a try if I were you. One last thing is that Vim is generally considered to be more stable than NeoVim. NeoVim isn't exactly bleeding edge technology, but if you do want to use the latest version and experience all the latest features, it is going to inherently be more unstable than just vanilla Vim. Now in practice, I've never actually run into any issues using NeoVim. I've never run into any weird bugs running the latest version of NeoVim, but just be aware that that may be an issue. And if you really care about stability more than anything, then I would just stick with Vim. Porting over from Vim to NeoVim is very simple. Basically, all you do is move your VimRC to an nvim configuration folder and rename it init.vim. What you can also do is you can even rewrite your entire Vim configuration in Lua. You definitely don't have to, but if you prefer working in Lua, then you can do that. And so just as my final review, I would recommend most people to use NeoVim. And if you're in one of those special use cases, like I mentioned before, then maybe stick with Vim. But I think NeoVim will be perfect for most people and it'll continue improving all the time. But if you haven't already, give NeoVim a chance and you might fall in love with it like I did.